In today's intriguing tale, join us as two policemen on a pre-dawn patrol encounter, a wobbly older man with an unexpectedly hilarious story. What starts as a routine stop turns into a surprising and enlightening lesson on the effects of alcohol. Stay tuned to uncover the twist in this midnight encounter. Two policemen were patrolling the streets at four o'clock in the morning when they suddenly spotted an older man walking alone. He was wobbling and barely able to walk in a straight line. Concerned, they decided to stop him for questioning to ensure he wasn't drunk in public or planning to drive home. Where are you coming from, sir? One of the officers asked. The man, with a big grin on his face, slurred, I come from the best place in the world, my favorite bar, the one with the best drinks and the nicest girls. Each one is friendlier than the next. He gave the officers a knowing wink. Sounds like a great place, said the other officer, trying to keep a straight face. And where are you headed at a time like this? Shouldn't you be in bed? Sleep? No way, the man exclaimed, almost losing his balance. I'm on my way to a lecture on alcohol addiction, its effects on the body, the harms of smoking, and proper social behavior. Really? The first officer said dubiously, exchanging skeptical looks with his partner. Are you sure you didn't drink too much tonight? I seriously doubt anyone is giving lectures at this time. Oh, absolutely, the man insisted, swaying more dramatically. In fact, last week I attended a seminar on the virtues of early rising and disciplined living, and before that, a workshop on the benefits of sobriety. You know, drinking alcohol before bed might help you fall asleep, but it actually disrupts your sleep cycle, causes more deep sleep at first, but then disrupts your REM sleep, leading to poor quality rest. I learned that alcohol can make snoring and sleep apnea worse by relaxing your throat muscles and messing with your circadian rhythms. The officers, now thoroughly entertained, nodded along. Interesting. And how do you manage to attend all these informative sessions? The man, not missing a beat, continued, Well, it's all part of my commitment to better living. Just the other day, I was at a talk on how alcohol aggravates snoring and sleep apnea. Fascinating stuff. Apparently, alcohol causes changes to blood vessels in the nose, leading to greater airway resistance and increasing the likelihood and duration of breathing events during sleep. And don't get me started on how it disrupts circadian rhythms, decreasing the body's sensitivity to cues like daylight and darkness. This can mess up the sleep-wake cycle, making you feel alert when you want to sleep and sleepy when you want to be awake. The officers burst into laughter, unable to contain themselves any longer. You sure do keep busy with all this learning, one said, wiping tears of laughter from his eyes. But you see, officers, there's more to it, settling into his storytelling stance. I used to think that a drink or two before bed was the perfect way to unwind. Maybe you've heard that nearly two-thirds of Americans who drink alcohol have a drink in the hours before bedtime? Well, I'm one of them. I enjoy a glass of beer or wine after dinner, and my weekends often include drinking with friends at bars or social events. A nightcap used to be part of my bedtime ritual. He paused to catch his breath, leaning against a lamppost for support. The policemen exchanged amused glances, urging him to continue. But here's the kicker, he said, straightening up. While some people find that drinking alcohol helps them fall asleep more easily, it actually has a negative impact on sleep. Even in moderate amounts, alcohol consumed in the hours before bedtime can cost you sleep and leave you feeling tired the next day. Really? One of the officers asked, feigning interest. Absolutely, the man replied, nodding vigorously. You see, how much alcohol you drink, and when you drink, it can both influence sleep. As you consume alcohol, it is rapidly absorbed into your bloodstream, where it remains until your liver is able to metabolize it, typically at a rate of about one drink per hour. If you have alcohol in your bloodstream when you go to sleep, you are likely to experience alterations in sleep architecture, that is, how your body cycles through the four stages of sleep. The policemen were now more intrigued by the man's extensive knowledge than by his drunken state. 
go on, one of them urged. The typical sleep cycle begins with three non-rapid eye movement, N-REM stages of sleep, and ends with rapid eye movement, REM sleep, the man explained. During sleep, the body cycles through all of these stages every 90 to 120 minutes, with N-REM sleep dominating the first part of the night and REM increasing during the second part of the night. Each stage is necessary for sleep to feel refreshing and for vital processes like learning and memory consolidation to occur. He took a deep breath before continuing. When you go to bed with alcohol in your system, you're likely to experience more N3 sleep, known as deep sleep, and less REM sleep than usual, at least initially. Later in the night, once your body has metabolized the alcohol, you're likely to experience a rise in N1 sleep, the lightest stage of sleep. This can lead to frequent wakings and fragmented, low-quality sleep. Wow, I didn't know that, one officer admitted, genuinely impressed. There's more, the man said, raising a finger as if delivering a crucial point. Alcohol can also disrupt your sleep by contributing to sleep disorders and interfering with circadian rhythms. For example, if you snore or have sleep apnea, a disorder that causes repeated pauses in breathing during sleep, Drinking alcohol tends to aggravate symptoms. Alcohol causes physiological changes that affect snores and people with obstructive sleep apnea, OSA, which occurs when tissues in the nose or throat collapse and temporarily obstruct the airway. Interesting, the second officer said, nodding thoughtfully. Indeed, the man agreed. For example, alcohol causes tongue and throat muscles to relax. It also causes changes to blood vessels in the nose, leading to greater airway resistance in the nasal passages. These alterations significantly increase the likelihood and duration of breathing events during sleep. Alcohol also affects people with central sleep apnea, CSA, which occurs when the brain periodically stops sending certain signals involved in breathing. Alcohol interferes with the brain's ability to receive chemical messages involved in breathing, which decreases the body's respiratory drive and increases the likelihood of pauses in breathing. So, alcohol is really bad for sleep, huh? One of the officers concluded. Exactly, the man exclaimed, almost triumphantly. People with alcohol in their systems are also generally harder to wake which means that they're less likely to experience arousals that help them recover from OSA and CSA-related pauses in breathing. He paused, taking a moment to steady himself against the lamppost. The officers waited patiently, now fully invested in the man's impromptu lecture. And let's not forget about insomnia, he continued. Heavy alcohol use can contribute to the development of insomnia, a sleep disorder characterized by difficulty falling asleep and staying asleep. As many as three quarters of people with alcohol dependence experience insomnia symptoms when they drink. Insomnia is also very common in people who are in withdrawal or early recovery from alcohol addiction. That's a vicious cycle, one of the officers remarked. It sure is, the man agreed. Heavy alcohol use can trigger insomnia and people with insomnia have an increased risk of developing alcohol use disorder. Many individuals turn to alcohol as a sleep aid, which only makes things worse. For people with alcohol dependence and insomnia, a destructive pattern can develop. Individuals drink alcohol at bedtime to help them fall asleep, but they end up sleeping poorly for much of the night. To counteract the excessive sleepiness they feel during the day, they rely on caffeine, but this makes it hard to fall asleep at bedtime, and the cycle begins again. That sounds rough, the other officer said sympathetically. It is, the man affirmed. Alcohol use and dependence appear to interfere with circadian rhythms, biological patterns that operate on a 24-hour clock. Evidence suggests that consuming alcohol may decrease the body's sensitivity to cues, like daylight and darkness, which trigger shifts in body temperature and secretion of the sleep hormone melatonin. These fluctuations play a vital role in the sleep-wake cycle, and when they are weakened or absent, a person may feel alert when they want to sleep and sleepy when they want to be awake. That's quite the education you're giving us, but sir, on a serious note, 
Who gives lectures on this time of the night? One of the officers said with a smile. The man sighed and answered, ask that question to my wife. <laughs> if you liked our joke, then please watch our next joke by clicking here.